Welcome back to the English Hustle podcast today. We're diving into a really important topic, social connection and loneliness, and how finding support can help us through tough times. Maria, have you ever felt like isolation made things harder for you? Absolutely, Alex. I think we all experience that at some point. When you're going through something challenging, it's easy to feel like you're alone. But in reality, there are so many people going through similar situations, and having someone to talk to can make all the difference. Definitely. It's almost like we convince ourselves that no one will understand what we're dealing with, right? But once you open up, you realize how common those feelings are. Exactly. And it's not just about having people around, it's about the quality of those relationships. You don't need a big social circle, but having a couple of close connections who really understand and support you can be a game changer. That's so true. Research shows that social support is one of the most powerful tools we have in managing depression and anxiety. It can provide emotional relief, and sometimes just having someone listen to you can make the burden feel lighter. I agree. And it's interesting because building those connections doesn't always come naturally. Sometimes we need to be intentional about reaching out, whether it's reconnecting with an old friend or joining a group that shares similar interests. Yeah, that can be tough, especially when you're already feeling low. But making that first step, even if it's something small like a text or a call, can really shift your perspective. For sure. And later in the episode, we're going to talk about some practical tips for building and maintaining those meaningful connections, even when it feels difficult. Sounds great. We'll also share some research on loneliness and the impact it has on mental health, plus a few stories from people who've managed to find support in unexpected ways. So stay tuned. This is an episode you don't want to miss. Definitely not. Let's get into it. All right, before we dive into the main conversation, let's go over some vocabulary related to today's topic, social connection and loneliness. This will help you follow along more easily. Ready, Maria? Ready. Let's start with the word loneliness. Loneliness means feeling sad, because you don't have anyone to talk to or spend time with, even if you're surrounded by people. Right. It's important to know that loneliness is different from being alone. You can feel lonely even in a crowd if you don't have a meaningful connection with others. Next, we have social connection. This means having relationships with other people where you feel supported, understood and valued. It can be with friends, family or even a community. Good one. Now, another useful word is support. When we talk about social support, it means getting help or comfort from people around us, especially during difficult times. For example, your friend might give you support by listening to your problems. Exactly. Now, here's a term we'll use a lot, mental health. This refers to your emotional, psychological and social well-being. It affects how you think, feel and act, especially when you're stressed or going through tough times. Yes, and to add to that, mental health can improve when we have strong social connections. Let's also talk about isolation. This means being separated from others either physically or emotionally. It's often one of the main causes of loneliness. That's right. And sometimes, when people feel isolated, they stop reaching out to others, which can make their loneliness worse. The last word we'll go over is community. A community is a group of people who share something in common, like interests, location or values. Being part of a community can help reduce feelings of loneliness. Great! 
Those are some key words we'll use throughout the episode. So remember, loneliness, social connection, support, mental health, isolation, and community will all come up later. We hope this helps you understand the topic better. Let's keep these words in mind as we move on to the main conversation. Ready, Alex? Let's do it! So, let's jump right into the main conversation today. Social connection and loneliness. Maria, we've all had moments where we felt disconnected from others, but I think for many people that feeling can last much longer, even leading to depression. How do you think social connection helps with that? It's such a big part of mental health, Alex. When we feel understood and valued by others, it boosts our self-esteem and gives us a sense of belonging. But when those connections are missing, it can lead to feelings of isolation, which often makes us feel even worse about our situation. Studies have shown that people with strong social support systems tend to cope better with stress and are less likely to experience long-term depression. Absolutely. I think it's interesting how, in a world where we're more connected than ever with technology, a lot of people still feel lonely. Social media can give us the illusion of connection, but it doesn't always replace face-to-face -face interactions or meaningful conversations. Exactly. Virtual connections can be great, but they're not always enough. Deep, meaningful connections require vulnerability and trust, which are hard to develop if you're only interacting with people through screens. In fact, some research suggests that social media can sometimes increase feelings of loneliness because it makes us compare ourselves to others. That's a great point. And when we talk about social connection, we're not just talking about having more friends or followers. It's about the quality of those relationships. Even one or two close, supportive friends can make a huge difference in someone's well-being. Definitely. And building those connections doesn't happen overnight, especially if you're going through a tough time. You have to be intentional about it. But I think it's important to start small. Maybe reach out to an old friend, join a group that shares your interests, or even consider volunteering. Being part of a community, even a small one, can help people feel less isolated. Yeah, sometimes just taking that first step can be the hardest. But once you start building connections, it becomes easier. I also think it's worth mentioning that for some people, seeking professional support like therapy or counseling is an important step. It's a different kind of social connection, but it can be a safe space to express emotions and receive guidance. Definitely. Therapists can provide that objective, non-judgmental support, especially when opening up to friends or family feels difficult. Another thing I'd like to add is the importance of being a good listener. When someone reaches out to you, even if you don't have all the answers, just being there for them can make a world of difference. Sometimes, people just need to know they're not alone. Absolutely. Listening without judgment is a powerful way to show support. So, to sum up what we've talked about so far, social connections, whether with friends, family, communities, or even professionals, can significantly reduce feelings of loneliness and help manage depression. It's about quality over quantity and being intentional about nurturing those relationships. Exactly. And later, we'll dive into some tips on how to build those meaningful connections, especially if you're starting from scratch. But before we move on, Let's discuss some of the barriers people face when trying to connect with others. Why do you think it's so hard for people to reach out when they're feeling lonely, Alex? That's a great question. I think there are a few reasons. One of the biggest is fear. Fear of being rejected or misunderstood. When you're already feeling low, 
The idea of reaching out and not getting the response you need can feel overwhelming. So instead of risking that, people sometimes choose to stay isolated. Yes, fear is a huge factor. There's also the stigma around loneliness and mental health in general. Some people feel like admitting they're lonely or struggling with depression is a sign of weakness, so they keep it to themselves. That's true. The idea that we have to be strong and independent all the time can make it harder for people to ask for help. But in reality, everyone needs support at some point. That's why it's so important to break down that stigma and remind people that it's okay to not be okay. Yes, and I think that's where self-compassion comes in. Understanding that it's normal to feel lonely sometimes and that it's not a reflection of your worth. Being kind to yourself can help make it easier to seek connection with others. I completely agree. So, coming up, we'll discuss practical steps to overcome these barriers and build meaningful connections, even when it feels difficult. Stay tuned for some actionable advice and tips to help you find support during tough times. Now, let's move on to the personal story segment, where we share real-life experiences to help illustrate the importance of social connection. Maria, I know you have a story to share that's really close to this topic. Would you mind telling us about it? Of course. So, a few years ago, I went through a really tough time, I had just moved to a new city for work, and even though I was excited, I didn't know anyone there. I was working long hours, and after a while, I started feeling really isolated. At first, I thought I was just homesick and that it would pass, but it didn't. It got worse. I felt like I didn't have anyone to talk to, and I was just going through the motions every day without really feeling connected to anyone. That sounds really hard, Maria. What was the turning point for you? What made you realize you needed to make a change? I remember one evening I was sitting at home, feeling really down, and I realized I hadn't spoken to anyone outside of work for days. That's when it hit me. I wasn't just lonely. I was becoming depressed. I knew I couldn't keep going like that, so I made the decision to reach out to someone. I called an old friend from college who lived in another city. We hadn't spoken in a while, but I just needed to talk to someone who knew me well. That's a big step. How did that conversation go? It was honestly a huge relief. I didn't even talk about how I was feeling at first. We just caught up, talked about life, and laughed about old memories. By the end of the call, I felt so much lighter. I realized how much I had been missing that kind of connection, and that phone call gave me the motivation to start reaching out more. That's amazing. Sometimes we forget how powerful just one conversation can be. Did that lead to other changes for you? Yes, it did. After that call, I made a conscious effort to put myself out there more. I started going to social events in the city, even though it was uncomfortable at first. I also joined a local book club, which was great because I met people who shared my interests. Slowly, I built a small but solid group of friends. It wasn't easy, but over time, I felt more connected and supported. Looking back, I realized that reaching out to my friend was the first step in changing everything. That's such an inspiring story, Maria. It really shows how important it is to take that first step, even when it feels difficult. You didn't need a huge group of friends. Just reconnecting with one person made a big difference for you. Exactly. I learned that sometimes it's not about how many people you have in your life, but how meaningful those connections are. And the thing is, once I started feeling more connected, my mental health improved, and I had more energy to be social again. It became a positive cycle. That's a great takeaway. 
and it's a reminder to anyone listening who might be feeling isolated, don't wait until you're in a really bad place. Even one small step, like calling an old friend or joining a new group, can be the start of building those important connections. Absolutely. And I think it's important to remember that it's okay if it takes time. Building connections doesn't happen overnight, but every little effort counts. I'm really grateful for that experience because it taught me how important it is to nurture the relationships in my life. Thank you for sharing that, Maria. I think a lot of people will relate to your story. It's a powerful example of how social connection can help us get through tough times. Coming up next, we'll talk about some tips and strategies for building those connections, especially when you're feeling stuck. Stay with us. All right. Now it's time for a deeper conversation. We've talked about the importance of social connections and some research around loneliness, but let's really dig into what it feels like and how people can take steps to change their situation. Maria, what do you think are some of the reasons people feel hesitant to reach out when they're lonely? I think one of the biggest reasons is fear. Fear of rejection or of being judged. When you're feeling lonely, you might think, what if they don't have time for me? Or what if they don't care about my problems? Those thoughts can be paralyzing and they make it hard to take that first step. Yeah, I felt that way before, too. It's almost like you start to second-guess yourself and think you're a burden to others. But I've also noticed that most people are happy when you reach out to them. They want to help. It's just about getting past that initial fear. Exactly. It's important to remember that we're all human, and most people have been in a similar situation at some point. A lot of the time, reaching out makes the other person feel good, too, because they get to help someone they care about. That's a great point. And sometimes, even if you're not in the mood to open up, just being around people can lift your spirits. It doesn't have to be a deep conversation right away. Maybe it's just having a coffee or going for a walk with someone. Little interactions can make a big difference. Right. It's those small moments of connection that build up over time, and they create trust, which makes it easier to talk about the harder stuff when you're ready. But on the flip side, what do you think about people who say they feel lonely, even when they're surrounded by others? That's such an interesting issue. I think it comes down to the difference between quantity and quality in relationships. You can be around people all day at work or even in social settings, but if those connections aren't meaningful, it can still feel isolating. It's like you're there, but not truly seen or heard. Exactly. It's so important to have deeper, authentic connections where you feel safe to be yourself. That's why it's worth investing time and effort into a few close relationships rather than trying to be friends with everyone. It's better to have a couple of people who really understand and support you than a large group where you feel like you can't be yourself. I couldn't agree more. Let's switch gears for a second and talk about the role of community. We touched on this earlier, but being part of a community, whether it's a sports team, a book club, or even an online group, can help people feel connected on a larger scale. What's been your experience with that? Oh, definitely. I've found that communities provide a sense of belonging that's hard to get in other ways. For example, when I joined that book club I mentioned earlier, it wasn't just about reading. It was about meeting people with similar interests, sharing ideas, and creating new friendships. That made me feel more grounded in the city I had just moved to. That's a great example. I think sometimes people forget that community can take many forms. It doesn't have to be a big formal group. 
It can be something as simple as a group of neighbors who meet up for coffee or an online forum where you share a common interest. Yes, and the key is participation. You have to show up even when it feels uncomfortable at first. It might take time to feel like you belong, but by consistently putting yourself out there, you slowly become part of that community. That's true. And I think there's another side to this, too, being the one who reaches out and invites others. Sometimes we wait for connection to come to us, but we can also be proactive in creating it for others. Absolutely. If you're in a good place, why not be the one to make the first move? Whether it's inviting a new co-worker to lunch or organizing a gathering for your friends, those small gestures of connection can make a big difference to someone who might be feeling lonely. Yes, and it's important to check in with people, especially those who might seem like they're doing fine. Sometimes the people who are struggling the most are the ones who don't show it. A simple, how are you really doing, can go a long way. I love that. It's all about being mindful of the people around us. You never know who might need a bit of extra support, even if they seem okay on the surface. Uh so to wrap this part of the conversation, I think the takeaway is this. Social connection takes effort. Whether you're reaching out for support or offering it to someone else, it's about building meaningful, supportive relationships that help both sides feel seen and valued. Exactly. Connection is a two-way street, and it's worth the time and energy to cultivate relationships that help us grow and feel supported. Coming up next, we're going to share some practical tips on how to start building or strengthening your connections, even if you're starting from scratch. Stay tuned. Now let's dive into some practical tips for building and strengthening those meaningful connections we've been talking about. Maria, what are some actionable steps people can take if they're feeling lonely or want to improve their social lives? Great question. The first step is to start small. If you're feeling overwhelmed, set a goal to reach out to just one person a week. This could be a friend a family member, or even someone you haven't spoken to in a while. A simple text or a phone call can reignite that connection. I love that idea. It makes it manageable. Another tip I'd suggest is to join local groups or clubs that align with your interests. Whether it's a sports team, a book club, or a hobby class, these groups provide a natural setting to meet new people who share your passions. Exactly. And related to that, consider volunteering. Not only does it feel good to give back, but volunteering can also connect you with like-minded individuals. You're all working toward a common goal, which can foster deeper connections. That's a great point. Volunteering really helps you meet people in a meaningful way. Another tip is to practice active listening. When you're in conversations, show genuine interest in what others are saying. Ask questions and engage. This not only helps deepen existing relationships, but can also make you more approachable. Absolutely. Active listening builds trust and makes people feel valued. Along those lines, I'd also suggest being open about your feelings. If you're struggling with loneliness, don't hesitate to share that with trusted friends or family. It can open the door for deeper conversations and support. Yes, vulnerability can be a powerful way to connect. And for those who find it challenging to express themselves, maybe consider writing it down first. Journaling about your feelings can help clarify what you want to say when you do reach out to someone. That's a great strategy. It helps to articulate your thoughts before discussing them with someone else. Also, don't underestimate the power of social media. While we talked about its downsides earlier, it can also be a useful tool for reconnecting with old friends or joining groups that share your interests. For sure. 
Just remember to balance online interactions with real-life connections. Another tip I'd recommend is to set a regular schedule for social activities. Whether it's a weekly coffee date or a monthly game night, having something on the calendar gives you something to look forward to and helps you stay connected. That's an excellent idea. Consistency can create a sense of stability in your relationships. And don't forget about self-compassion. Be kind to yourself if things don't go as planned. Not every interaction will lead to a deep connection, and that's okay. The important thing is to keep trying. Absolutely. And to add to that, when you do make plans, try to stay present. Put away your phone and engage fully in the moment. This not only shows respect for the other person, but also allows you to enjoy the interaction more. Yes. Presence is key to meaningful conversations. And if you're feeling anxious about social situations, consider practicing some relaxation techniques beforehand, like deep breathing or visualization exercises, to calm your nerves. That's a great tip for anyone who struggles with social anxiety. And lastly, remember that building connections takes time. Don't rush the process. Focus on quality interactions rather than trying to meet a certain number of people. Exactly. The goal is to create authentic relationships that bring joy and support into your life. And remember, it's perfectly okay to ask for help if you're struggling. Whether that's reaching out to a friend or seeking professional guidance, taking that step is a sign of strength. Thank you, Maria, for sharing these practical tips. They're not only helpful for those feeling lonely, but can also strengthen existing relationships. Building connections is a journey, and every small step counts. Definitely. If you're feeling inspired to take action, we encourage our listeners to pick just one or two of these tips to try out this week. Remember, connection is vital for our mental health, and it's worth the effort. Up next, we'll wrap up with our conclusion and key takeaways from today's discussion. Stay with us. Welcome back. As we wrap up this episode on social connection and loneliness, finding support during tough times, let's take a moment to reflect on some key points we discussed. Maria, what stands out to you? One of the most significant takeaways for me is the undeniable impact that social connections have on our overall well-being. The research shows that having meaningful relationships can not only boost our mental health, but also improve our physical health. Loneliness is a serious issue, but there are concrete steps we can take to build and strengthen our connections. Absolutely. I think we highlighted the importance of starting small, whether it's reaching out to an old friend or joining a new group. It's those initial steps that can lead to more significant changes over time. Absolutely. I think we highlighted the importance of starting small, whether it's reaching out to an old friend or joining a new group. It's those initial steps that can lead to more significant changes over time. Right. And we also discussed how quality matters more than quantity in relationships. Having a few close, supportive friends can be more beneficial than having a large circle where you don't feel truly connected. Yes, and vulnerability plays a crucial role in building those deeper connections. Sharing how you feel, even if it's uncomfortable, can open the door to more authentic relationships. That's so true. And let's not forget about the power of community and being proactive in reaching out. Volunteering or joining groups can create opportunities for connection that you might not find otherwise. Exactly. It's all about creating a network of support that can help you through tough times. We also mentioned some practical tips, like setting a regular schedule for social activities and practicing active listening. These can really enhance your interactions and strengthen your relationships. Definitely. And being patient with yourself during this process is essential. 
Building meaningful connections takes time, and it's important to be kind to yourself along the way. As we conclude, we encourage our listeners to take action. If you're feeling lonely, reach out to someone this week, whether it's a phone call, a text, or meeting up for coffee. And if you're in a good place, consider checking in on a friend who might need some support. Absolutely. Let's all commit to nurturing our relationships and fostering connections, both for ourselves and for others. Remember, you are not alone, and there's strength in reaching out. Thank you for joining us today on The English Hustle Podcast. We hope this discussion has inspired you to take steps toward building meaningful connections. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. What strategies have worked for you in building connections? Share your stories with us on social media or in the comments. Until next time, take care and keep hustling. See you in the next episode.